Hello and welcome to season two of this playthrough with AC Milan and um, I'm back and as you can see I've obviously chosen to do AC Milan uh, and I'm just going to quickly justify my reasons for it. Um, I was thinking really, you know, I was really getting into this uh, series with AC Milan. I've never really done AC Milan before and it's the second season and really on FM the second season onwards is really where the game kicks off and, and starts to change to, to uh, like uniquely your world uh, and that's why I really want to do it and I was really planning to do an Arsenal one for you guys anyway when FM12 uh, came out and obviously now it's been announced uh, we're not too far away um, and as I've said before and as uh, Swartz Interactive has said it's out before Christmas so I can only assume November uh, October or early December uh, is what I'm thinking so um, yeah so I was going to do an Arsenal on that anyway and I don't really think the situation at Arsenal will be uh, restored uh, from now until the end of the transfer window really uh, I don't know about what you look you guys think but I know a lot of people wanted to see the Arsenal one but I mean I'm, I'm on the second season of this now and, and it's going to start getting interesting uh, I've brought new players in young players um, players who might still need to settle, might not perform straight away and might leave us uh, maybe not running away with the title but actually chasing it or even uh, just uh, snatching it at the end maybe but uh, we'll have a look and see how the season goes so this is the first episode, you won't be seeing the Fiorentina game that will be in the second episode, this is just going to be a recap of the summer and the Super Cup which I showed you in the last video, uh, it was a 4-3 thriller and uh, you will see that later on. But first, go through the new signings at the club. And I think I've got some stuff in my notebook. Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, we sold Emmanuelson to Zenit. Before I started bringing any players in, I had to I had to sell uh, Emmanuelson for six million, which was I thought a good price, considering that AC Milan got it for free, I believe, or one point five million. That's not too much. So that's a good profit on him. Uh, Players, uh, fans player of the year was uh, Javier Pastore, which I was delighted for him because, you know, he had such a fantastic season. Didn't win any global awards, but uh, did deserve that award uh, at least. <laughs> uh, we went on to sign Gregory van der Veel for £10.5 million. Um, I think about £5 million up front, uh, I think. And then we went to sign uh, Shakhtar's goalkeeper, Piatov, uh, Andrew Piatov, on a free transfer. And he will be arriving in January. Uh, we then offered Emmanuel Adebayor a contract. Uh, Manchester City had him transfer listed for 4.4 million. <laughs> as ridiculous as that is. Uh, but we just couldn't afford his wages. His wages were just ridiculous. And then, as I promised, if he didn't sign for Palermo, he would definitely be signing for AC Milan. Eden Hazard has come to the club for a fee of 16 million. All of that up front. Uh, I just wanted to get that transfer done and dusted. Really wanted him to join the club. This was a more these last two, uh, Mvia and Asamo, were more difficult signings. With me signing uh, Mvia for about four million up front and the rest in monthly instalments. And it says it eventually may rise to 18.5. That is due to uh, clauses and other appearance-based bonuses. Uh, Quadua Samoa, <laughs> 15 million and may eventually rise for 27.5. That was a difficult one to negotiate, but uh, I think by the time he gets to those contracts, I think he will be a very good player and it would be worth it. Um, to Carlos Tevez, his agent came out and said he might be available for Manchester City. Uh, I inquired about his uh, availability to Manchester City and they said they want 44.8 million. Um, but I just thought it wasn't worth it and with the strikers we've got, uh, we should be alright for this season. So I left it at that. So uh, those are the transfers. Van der Veel, Piatov, Hazard, Envia and Asamoah. Uh, uh, and the ones going out are Emmanuelson uh, and I think... I can't, I can't remember now because it's been ages since I've done this. But yeah, uh, also uh, Chesney and Ty Tewo on loan. Uh, uh, Chesney is on a one-year deal. I couldn't do it to a six-year deal, so I just did it one year. And when Piatov comes in, I will terminate this guy's contract. Um, he won't be playing much. It will just be uh, silly goo. It might be him in like the Italian Cup or group stages of the Champions League. Um but he, he definitely will play, and Tai Tewo is only going to be on loan for this season. I do have a clause in his contract, however, of an agreed price of 5.75. I'm not planning on using that, but if he does impress, I may. Uh, but he is um, 
definitely an option if I do want to do that. I mean, 5.75 is not really that much. I don't really, I don't think I have the money actually to spend, but yeah, zero. Uh, once again, I clean out the bank. And uh, yeah, they're, they're upset with me letting Ambrosini go out on a free. Who are the players that left? Um, let's see. Yeah, <laughs> um, Man City offered forty point five million for Mamadou Sacco, but it was twenty eight million over eighteen months, which didn't really want to. It was only like twelve million up front. Um, I didn't feel it was worth it, and Tottenham came in for Cohen Trail, which I rejected a fifteen million bid because I feel he's worth about thirty, about twenty five million, I think. Uh, even 20 million at least because he's just had a fantastic debut season. So uh, that I didn't feel was worth it. Let's have a look at clauses. <laughs> yeah, so uh, 5 million will be due for 50 league appearances. 7.5 million will be due for 50 league goals because I don't feel he'll get 50 league goals anytime soon. Uh, 210k per month for 48 months. Um. Yeah, basically a lot of clauses still need to be paid, and uh, I don't think really we need many players uh, now. I did scout John Fleck, because this guy normally is a very good player on this game, and for you, if you've never heard of him, John Fleck from Rangers, he's injured at the beginning of the game, but he is a very good p uh, player, potentially, apparently, but uh, because of the quality of my squad, he apparently isn't worth signing. So, um, yeah. And the other noticeable changes, Perlo, I think, rejected a contract. Um, did he sign a new contract recently? Started, yeah, he, he rejected a contract from us. But I think his wages were just, wait, it's just too high uh, for me to even start negotiating. So I just moved the mic there. Um, yeah, so I think we'll go into the Palermo game now. And uh, I might try and negotiate a contract for him front of you and just show you what I mean but let's uh, let's go for Palermo first it's been a long time since I've done a commentary uh, like this but uh, I'm just easing back into it now and Abate played in this game um, for Palermo obviously and Lukaku burying him once again uh, obviously that's two goals in two against Palermo and two goals in the last two games for Lukaku Obviously, both of those our last two games have been against Palermo, and Hazard getting his debut goal with a nice cross from Cohen Thrall, who's consistently done that throughout the the previous season. And next up, uh, we lose the ball here, and uh, this is where it got a bit nervy for me. Moving the ball quickly, Palermo, we couldn't get anywhere near it, as you can see. And <coughs> I don't need any experience, and uh, I think the awareness by Taiwo there wasn't very good. And, uh, again, that boosted my decision, maybe not to sign him on a permanent basis. But, uh, yeah, maybe I should have played him at left wing, as opposed to Cohen Thrall, but, oh well. But Sacco looked really good in this game, I, th I thought. Um, obviously, you're going to make your mistakes, but... He's still young and William scoring a very, very good goal. And again, his quality showing once again. And uh, at this point, uh, I think the half-time team talk really worked because uh, there weren't too many clear-cut chances uh, in the second half. But <laughs> I thought that we, got, we, we deserved that. I mean, Hernandez obviously didn't score, but he hit the post really well and... I'm t I'm hoping he'll he'll come back he'll come good this season, uh, as well as Lukaku, and Ibrahimovic and Kasana will be playing up front. I feel, uh, this season I think um, actually no it won't be Kasana it'll be Pato, uh, I think and Kasana will play playing in the hole with uh, Pastore, and obviously we've got Sanchez, um, Rubinho, Taiwo Hazard, and Asamo scoring a header in the eighty sixth minute. Uh, to score the winning goal and it's his first goal and Envia also made his debut but P 
picked up a yellow card. Peto was injured and that happened. Three months without Pato, so another long-term injury for him at the beginning of the season. But uh, he did come in and have some very impressive performances, most notably against Barcelona uh, last season. Just looking down here to see if I've missed anything. We're almost signing this guy. And if I remember correctly, he scored against us uh, yeah, last season. Or am I wrong? There was someone who scored. It was again that was an Andalek guy, I think. I am mistaken then. Um Yeah, Manchester City just want a bloody centre back from us, don't they? They've come in for Sacco, Jones, I think even Cohen Trow they came in for and just rejecting and rejecting. Look inquire about Jones. But yeah, I think uh, that will be the end of this season. And um, <clears throat> end of this season, what am I talking about? End of this episode, this first episode recap of the summer. And I will see you next time for the game against Fiorentina. And hopefully we can start the season with a good win at home.